In this segment, we are going to talk about some of those things that have a major impact on your ability to digest and use foods, but those things that are not really often talked about. One of those things is kala. Kala means the timing of consumption of food. And for the most part, we are we usually end up eating when we have the time or when we are hungry. We also don't have regular meal times. But according to the Ayurvedic science, where the fundamental principle is that as is the cosmos, such is the human body. As is the human body, such is the cosmos. This principle by itself tells us that we are very deeply tied in to the order of the universe. Now, being diurnal mammals, right, we have a distinct relationship with the sun. Our body kind of rises when the sun rises and sets when the sun sets. And some of us might be familiar with a term called circadian rhythm, which is how do your sleep and wake cycles work? But as people are looking into it further, and something that Ayurveda identified a long time ago, was that it's not only your sleep and wake cycles that are related to the sun, it's also your ability to digest foods. There are certain energies which are dominant in different parts of the day. And based on that, functioning of certain activities are more enhanced. So let's go into this a little bit, just with that in our minds, that Let's look at the universe around us and see how the day changes. The one thing I'd like to point out here is that pretty much all other mammals are actually in tune with their rhythms. If you've ever gone for a safari, you probably may have heard the ranger telling you that, oh, it's, you know, it's afternoon and you'll probably see these animals and it's nighttime or it's a sunny day. So we've somewhere lost the intelligence that we carried originally to be able to tell what is it that we require in our bodies at different timings during the day. So let's see what happens in the morning. In the hours of 6 to 10, around then, early morning when you wake up and you look at the earth around you and there is a kind of wetness, a kind of sluggishness, maybe dew. You know, birds are slowly chirping, leaving their nests. But if you really tune in to the environment in the morning, you can tell that there is a slow start. And that's exactly what's happening in your body. It's called the kapha time of the day, which is a little bit of a wet time of the day. And what happens in the morning is, just as the universe is slightly wet, such so is our body. The evidence for that is that if you've ever tried to exercise in the morning, your joints could feel a little more slow and sluggish. People have congestion, maybe eye boogers. Basically, all the fluids in the body are a little bit more dense. So what is it that you're supposed to eat, consume, and do in the morning to support this? Now, before you really head into the day, and during this morning time, the hours between 6 and 10, of course, while exercise is recommended to really get your engine started, for food, the ideal recommendation is a warm breakfast. Something warm, something a little liquid, something spiced. When your body is feeling cold, it needs to be stimulated. One of the biggest mistakes we make in our times today is the consumption of fruit in the morning. I mean, just think about it. Fruit by its own quality is a little sluggish. It's a little wet. If you've ever thrown fruit into a trash can, you can see how quickly it starts fermenting. So fruit first thing in the morning, while it seems like the most healthiest option, is actually going to add to the properties of that sluggishness, that slowness, sinus congestion, all of those. In that case, you can make yourself a warm spiced porridge, cooked apples. Basically, you want to go and head towards a hot, nice breakfast. Now, let's take it further into the day. As the day builds up, as the sun begins to shine harder, it becomes warm on the planet. That's when plants really begin their photosynthesis. As human beings, we ourselves have, you know, the busiest hours at work are usually between 10 and 2 because it's the energy of transformation that's dominant on the planet. 
everybody is at work. All diurnal species are at work. It's also when we become very active in our minds and our agni or our digestive fire is very activated. If you notice, when you don't eat lunch, you probably get hangry versus if you skip dinner, you may get cranky because it's that heat, that intense heat in the body. When that's not really fed, the food, you don't give fuel to the fire, it kind of starts acting up which also means that lunchtime is your biggest opportunity to eat whatever you want. I tell everybody, this is when you do your indulgences. So of course, while you still want to follow as many Ayurvedic principles in terms of combining your six tastes and in terms of adding the spices and the good fats, this is really where you can go all out, eat bigger portions, indulge. And often people find, it, find that they feel sluggish after lunch, but when you give up cold foods, for breakfast and you're eating a warm breakfast, when you give up smoothies and fruits and you eat a warm breakfast, that is unlikely to happen that you feel extremely sluggish after the lunchtime. So take advantage of lunchtime. You know, while it's your most productive in terms of your mind, it's also most productive in terms of your agni being able to digest your food. Now let's take it later into the day when you just think about what happens, you know, in the hours from two to six right around three o'clock or four o'clock for most people, they begin to feel a little bit wind in their body. And if you look around you in the universe as the sun sets, it becomes more windy. And evidence of this is in all the stretching that happens and this kind of lullness, dullness that comes at four o'clock. Most people reach out for their caffeine then. Now, of course, you want to have, you want to consume something that's going to activate and stimulate you because now the universe is kind of, you know, going home and so is your, so is your body and digestion. At this point, I would recommend going out there, taking a few deep breaths, walking a little bit, and then maybe drinking a stimulating tea like maybe tulsi or dried ginger, something that's active like a peppermint and fueling yourself through that. It's easy to run out for caffeine, but then caffeine only extends, fools you that you have more energy than you do at this hour. Now let's take it further into the day. As the sun begins to set, and I invite you to actually notice the sounds, the sounds of the birds when the day is first activated early in the morning, and the sounds around you in the evening. The nature sounds are quite different. They're more settling. The energy that's very dominant is the energy of earth. It's a very grounding energy. And it's your time to also ground what happens to the digestive fire, to the agni at that point, is it really begins to settle in and even shut down. So ideally, we're not supposed to be this dinner eating species, but we've really evolved ourselves into that. Now, if you're working on a farm or you're an athlete, it's a different story. But for most of us, dinner is an unnecessary meal. But now since we've gotten our bodies used to dinner and your agni is really settling and shutting down by the end of the day, I would recommend eating a very small portion of light dinner. And this is really where we kind of go wrong because a lot of people have long work days and dinner is their only quiet meal. But doing that, right, allowing yourself to sit with so much food right before bedtime really slows down the great opportunity that lies in the next few phases of the night. So if you plan for that nice hot breakfast and a big lunch and maybe something stimulating at four o'clock and a really small dinner like a soup or some roasted veggies, then you can really set yourself up for the next part of the day, which is the first part of the night, which is starting at 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Now the recommendation is to be in bed by 10 p.m. because something really wonderful happens. And today we know that, that there is a melatonin rise and your body conducts this internal repair and restoration. And when you're sleeping and you don't have that excess food sitting in your gut, then your body is really able to use that energy to detect all the cells that need work, that the debris that needs to be cleaned up. It's like a deep cleaning and healing that your body goes through every single night. So when you're asleep between the hours of 10 and 2, then you can take advantage of this opportunity where your body does this deep cleaning. 
Now, if you've noticed around two o'clock, a lot of people, when this kind of internal cleaning is done, a lot of times people wake up either in a sweat because those toxins are released or they want to urinate. And it's not necessary that you'll wake up like that, but around two o'clock, sometimes you can toss and turn and the sleep gets lighter because you come into the morning part of the day, which is from two to six. Now, basically all functions have been done. You've consumed food in the day, it's been digested, you've gone through the night, the debris has been clean. So there's a kind of lightness in the nervous system. And if you're able to sleep through it, great. But mostly when people are awoken at this hour between two and six, they find themselves very anxious because of the lightness. Now your nervous system has space. It has the ability to go wherever it wants and often it can lead to anxiety. Of course, this is also a great opportunity since there is space created for people to meditate, to do some grounding work, do some chanting, really connect with themselves. And then come six o'clock, you kind of start the cycle all over again. The one thing, that one opportunity that lies at around six o'clock, right when this space, this so-called vata time of the night is ending, there's an opportunity where your peristaltic movement becomes natural and active. So if you were to wake up at six, you would be more likely to have an easy bowel movement, which is ideal at this time in the day. And it will also help to activate your Agni for the next day. So like that, when we understand that all mammals work with this intelligence that the universe carries, and you end up kind of going with the flow, swimming with the tide, otherwise your body has to work twice as hard to work against its natural rhythms when we're eating heavy dinners and lighter lunches and sleeping late. So I'm going to just sum that up really quickly for you again. Early morning, 6 to 10, is the time of the day when you're sluggish, sti exercise, stimulating breakfast. Lunchtime between 10 and 2, the sun is out, we're most productive, so is our Agni. Eat your biggest lunch, your biggest meal at that point. 2 to 6, it gets windy outside. You kind of experience wind and like a dullness in your own body. Get out there, some fresh air, a spicy tea like ginger or peppermint. Dinner, the world is really shutting down. So is your Agni or digestive fire. Eat a really small portion. Get to bed by 10 o'clock. And if you wake up before 6, if you're unable to sleep and you wake up before 6, use that time to do some breath work, meditation, grounding, channeling. And then you do it all over again at 6. So when you really follow these rhythms, your body will stay in balance and be able to digest and metabolize your foods effectively.